When picking a food for our dogs, it's really important to look at the back of the bag, but maybe even more important than that is looking at what the manufacturer doesn't even put on the packaging. I'm going to review four of the most popular kibble brands, why I personally wouldn't feed them as a nutritionist and a research pet parent. I'll also in a moment be talking about Science Diet, Merrick, and a few others. So to start off with Whole Food Clusters, Honest Kitchen is a really interesting brand. It started off as a small independently owned pet pet food company that had treats, supplements, and foods, and they still do, but they're now available in the bigger retail stores like a Petco or PetSmart. What I really like about them, I'll start off with some positives, is that they are human grade. Remember, human grade are foods that are fit for human consumption. Most pet foods are feed grade, feed grade being foods that are unfit for human consumption, and they dehydrate their food, which means they cook it at lower, slower temperatures than most. Now, some of the concerns I have of Honest Kitchen, one is their sourcing seems to be inconsistent. Example, with their beef, all it says, and all I can find, comment below if you know differently, is that their beef is ranch raised, and there is really no protocol for what that means. So they do use vitamin synthetic packs. Unfortunately, I saw some possible ingredient splitting in their grain-free beef recipe recipe, which is a practice that many brands do. I'm really just not a fan of it, where they take lower quality or at least perceived lower quality ingredients and they break them up into multiple ingredients like potato and then sweet potato to make the total potato content in the food look like it's lower on the ingredient deck because they know consumers or pet parents are going to want to see meat and meat products higher in the ingredient deck. Now to give Honest Kitchen some credit, they have some incredible treats. Now the only treats I like of theirs are their single or two ingredient treats. They have some awesome fish beams, which are sourced sustainably. And again, they're single ingredients, so there's not any added fillers in it. Now let's talk about Merrick. This is a brand that you see at almost every large pet store and it is owned by Nestle. And I think that's important because when you know who owns a brand, while this isn't always the case, typically though, you can really understand what their motivation is. This brand is also a traditional kibble in terms of their processing. And that means that it is cooked and extruded at extremely high temperatures, which is why when you look at their ingredient panels, they're so long and there's so many words and numbers on there because they have to add in synthetic ingredients to be able to add some nutrition back into the, the food. Based on all the research I could do, it looks like their food is only made with feed grade meats. And what I'm seeing in Merrick's ingredient decks is they're taking lower quality ingredients like peas or po potato or potato protein, and they're breaking them up into sub ingredients. The other problem with this is these ingredients are typically added to foods to artificially inflate the amount of protein in the food. Now let's talk about instinct and a quick caveat. This video is not intended to shame a brand or bash on a brand. And it's also not intended to tell you what to do. These are my personal opinions based on what I would feed, or in this case, not feed my dogs based on the values I hold when it comes to feeding my pets. Now, before we jump into instinct, we've got to talk about enrichment because it's really important to me. Big shout out to Super Chew and BarkBox for supporting our mission to save all the damn dogs by sponsoring something that I rarely see people talk about. You can request allergy friendly boxes. You'll see here, I actually just requested no treats, but these toys are amazing. So this one, for example, look at this, is a two-in-one toy. So even if they're able to bite off this outer layer, there's another toy inside. Look at this durable, looks like an ice cream cone. So cute. There you go, Wally. And by enrichment, you can see Wally's already ready to get started is I'll just take some of their favorite treats and I sprinkle it at the bottom or sometimes I'll use like little apple slices or carrots and then I put the toys over top of them and then they have to dig and forge and sniff to get them out. Now let's look at the bark box which are going to be the more traditional plush toys and I find them to still be more durable than standard ones I find at the pet store uh, but if you have a super shredder, super chewer, super chewer might be better for your dog. Look at this yappy meal. This was my favorite one. How iconic is this? This one has crazy crinkle and a special surprise toy inside. Look at the gobbler. It even comes with less plush inside. So let's say your dog does shred it open. It's less of a mess. There you go. Next up, we have this tug and toss toy. I think it would be great to interact with your dog. Just look how stinking cute this is. If you've ever used a snuffle mat, you're gonna like this. So these are their squeak potato fries. And by the way, there's special offers for both Super Chewer and BarkBox linked down below. But what you can do is in between these little fries, 
fries. You could put some of your dog's kibble or treats and then they have to work to dig and forage and get them out. And don't forget, this is the perfect gift for dog mom or dog dad. You can send these as an actual gift. Everything will be linked down below for you. Instinct is growing in popularity with their dry food, but I just can't quite get on board with it. And there's a few reasons. First off, they are not a human grade food. They use feed grade meats, which again means unfit for human consumption. And their sourcing to me is questionable. All they really claim is that they use USA raised beef or USA raised ranch beef. And to me, that really doesn't mean a whole bunch. It's also cooked and extruded at extremely high temperatures. Again, there's other brands out there that dehydrate their food, air dry their food, or even bake their food. And this is probably the most annoying part of this brand that just ooh, ruffles my feathers and their raw coated or freeze dried coated kibble is that when you look at their ingredient panel on that food, the freeze dried liver that is supposedly coating the kibble is after the salt. And in the pet food industry, anything listed after salt represents less than 1% of the ingredients in the food, meaning that less than 1% of the food has freeze dried ingredients in there. So to me, that's completely misleading and making you or me feel like we're doing more for our dog than we actually are. It's completely just marketing in my opinion. Now, before I jump into science diet and some of the brands that I really, really love, uh, make sure to click that subscribe button to support our mission to save all the damn dogs and turn on that notification bell. So science diet, interestingly, is owned by Colgate Palmolive, meaning that it's probably safe to assume they're more profit focused than pet focused. At least that's my opinion. Just like these other brands that I don't love. They're cooked and extruded at extremely high temperatures and they do ingredient splitting with two of my least favorite ingredients with corn and soy. And that to me is wildly frustrating and also why I truly believe that they're really out for profits and not pet health. So it's really difficult for me and most pet parents to believe that dogs could truly and genuinely thrive, not just live, but thrive when eating high excessive amounts of low quality, highly GMO corn, soy, soybean, grains, and non-species appropriate ingredients like those. And even with all of these filler ingredients, which a lot of brands will add in to artificially inflate the amount of protein in the food, they still have a lower, relatively lower protein percent. It's about 23, 23 and a half percent, but enough with the doom and gloom. There are still plenty of really great pet food options out there that are complete and balanced, human grade, high quality. I have my official dog food list linked down below so you can check that out. Or if you want to talk about it together, click the video right here and we'll go over the foods I love. Or if you want to learn more about ways that you can boost your dog's kibble bowl, click the video right here. Don't forget to click that subscribe button and I hope you have a beautiful day. Goodbye!